Another hard grind in the <laughs> afternoon and five miles ahead, British explorer Robert Falcon Scott wrote in his diary. Our chance still holds good if we can put the work in, but it's a terribly trying time. It was mid-January 1912, and the 43-year-old Royal Navy officer was nearly 800 miles into a journey to one of the last unexplored places on the globe, the South Pole. Scott's five-man party had already endured brushes with blizzards and frostbite during their trek. They were now less than 80 miles from the finish line, but a single question still loomed over their progress. Would they be the first group of men in history to reach the South Pole? Or the second? Laughs from the past. Beep. Little laughs. Hello and welcome to Little Laughs. Every Thursday, they don't fall into a season. They're just short little stories that sound fun. This is the race to the South Pole, as you heard mm. Jake intro there. Haven't heard about this. Mm-mm. You think it's the same as the race to the moon? Fake? <laughs> a farce. Yeah. The whole thing's a farce. A farce. I wonder, you know, the race to the moon is like, us versus the Russians. Sure. You have to really have someone buy in. Like, someone's like, I'm going to be the first in the South Pole, and it's like, all right. Right. You need a competitor in a race. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder who's racing here and why. It sounds like they potentially got beat. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, all right. Let's just dive right in. What is the South? Where's the South Pole? Ooh, interesting question. South Pole, but, like, does anyone live there? Guess. Antarctica? No, it's, like, dead center Antarctica. And it's not even like a country isn't even, it's not even a country place, right? What's that mean? No yeah. one owns it? No. It's a continent. I mm. think there's like some area. But no one has jurisdiction. Nobody there. habitats it. It's just yeah. like scientists. I don't think anyone has any jurisdiction anywhere in Antarctica. There's just like research labs. Penguins and research. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was just making sure. Scott's frozen ordeal had begun over a year earlier when his ship Terra Nova had arrived on Ross Island in Antarctica's McMurdo Sound. Murdo. Scott recruited men from his original Antarctic voyage and from Ernest Shackleton's ship Nimrod. Mm, okay. Good album. McMurdo and Nimrod, which had recently returned from the Antarctic. His crew incl- included naval seamen, scientists, and paying members, so just, like, people that wanted to go. Discover. Yeah. Okay. Say you helped discover Antarctica. His ship sailed from Cardiff on 15th of June, 1910. His 34-man shore party was tasked with conducting scientific research and collecting wildlife and rock samples, but Scott, who had previously led an Antarctic mission in 1902, mm. was also determined to make a run at the Pole. Before leaving on the expedition, he had vowed to reach the South Pole and to secure for the British Empire the honor of this achievement. See, that's what I'm saying, whereas the British Empire like, cool, dude. I mean, if you can, get it, but... Yeah, I think it's like we're the first. You know, we, we did it. Yeah. It's like, like the moon thing a little bit. You'd hype it up. If this dude comes back and is like, hey, right. we're the first people, we're the first then Britain would be like, hell yeah. yeah. But if France was the first, Britain would be like, we don't care. Yeah. We weren't trying. No, I think I think it's pretty funny that it's not part of the mission. Like, yeah, he's just doing it. Go there, get some rock samples and some other stuff for science. And then he's like... And I will reach the South Pole. Sucks for his crew because it like seems like they might not be hell bent on going. We don't care for that at yeah. all. They're yeah. like, yeah, if you have time when you're we done with will the science. leave you behind. Yeah, yeah. Scott's mission was made all the more urgent by the knowledge that another explorer mm. was seeking the pole. Roald, is that how you say it? Rold? Roald? I like Rold. A Munsden. A Munsden was a 39-year-old Norwegian who had spent most of his life venturing to the far corners of the globe. He had been to Antarctica in the late 19th century and later became the first man in history to sail the treacherous Northwest Passage linking the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. 
1909. I thought that didn't exist. I thought the Northwest Passage was a farce, like no one ever found it. Apparently not. I was trying to picture how in the Northwest, the Atlantic and the Pacific could connect, but it's over. It's over. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, people spent years trying to find that passage, but it was always ice and stuff. The, the terror docked and failed. But, yeah, I got a route here. Yeah. But that was like a big goal. All right. Um, Amundsen had announced a new expedition to navigate the ice flow riddled waters of the Arctic in the North Pole to the North Pole. He had hoped to be the first man to achieve the feat. But after the American explorers, explorers Frederick Cook and Robert Peary both claimed to have beaten him to the punch, Amundsen secretly changed his plans without telling his financial backers or even his own crewmen at first. The Norwegian steered his ship Fram toward Antarctica and set his sights on reaching the South Pole. Before arriving, he sent a letter to Scott, who was still outfitting his own expedition in Australia. It simply read, Beg leave to inform you Fram proceeding Antarctic. Left out so many words. He's paying per letter. Short and sweet. Beg leave to inform you Fram proceeding Antarctic Amundsen. Signed it. He signed those words. Beg leave. Beg leave to inform you, Fram proceeding Antarctic, Amundsen. So basically, you're like, hey, dude, I'm about to just uh, crush your goals. Yeah. Are you rooting for the Norwegian guy or Scott? Interesting question. Early on, uh, I think I'm going crazy Norwegian guy. Get me rolled. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of cool. The Norwegian guy's going to the North Pole. Finds out someone already did it, so turns his ship around and now knows that there's a guy trying to do it in the South Pole, and he sends him, like, a taunting letter. That almost makes me not like him. The taunting letter's fun. I like a taunting letter. But I don't like being so bored with life on this planet Yeah, that he had to go to the North Pole, and now he has to go to the South Pole. Yeah. You find something else. Also, dude. terrible name of a ship. Fram? Fram. Horrible. I wouldn't even want to board it. The Norwegian expedition enjoyed a few clear advantages in what newspapers were soon calling the race for the South Pole. How are they reporting on this? They're in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. What's going on there? Amundsen set his camp up on the Ross Ice Shelf in the Bay of Wales, a point that was over 60 miles closer to the pole than Scott's home base in McMurdo Sound. And unlike Scott, whose expedition was burdened by its scientific obligations, a Mudston was focused only on reaching the pole and returning safely. Science, he later admitted, would have to look after itself. I hate rolled. You're off him pretty quick. I hate rolled. I'm so team Scott and the McMurdo. Gang. What about this? I like him as a villain. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Science would have to look after itself. Because cool. I just got to beat this fucker to South Sweet, Pole. Sweet dude. After spending the early part of 1911, the year my great-grandmother Elizabeth was born, uh, and laying down advance caches of food and supplies for their polar journeys, Amundsen and Scott's expeditions took shelter and spent several months waiting out the dark and frigid Antarctic winter. Amundsen later tried to get a head start by beginning his journey early in September of 1911 but was forced to turn back after temperatures dipped as low as 68 degrees below zero. Friday, on October 20th, 1911, conditions improved enough for his five-man team to begin their dash to the pole. Scott got underway about a week later on November 1st. I mean, by the way, that's like 11 days. I don't know why they said about a week later. We have the dates. 11 days. We have the dates. Yeah. So... This article originally said a few days later, and I was like, it's way more than a few days. We have gotcha. things, so I changed it to about a week, but still, you're right. Good at it. Yeah, 11 <laughs> days. Um, all right, so boring so far. Wow. Not the whole story. Wow. Not the whole story. Wow. Just that paragraph. Like, okay, they're getting, they're off. Well, they, he has a head start, and he's also 60 miles closer to the South Pole. That's what they're saying, Amundsen. So you're setting this up for Scott to beat him. Comeback season. Okay, I like it now. 
Amundsen and Scott re- relied on vastly different forms of transport during their journeys. Okay. Scott employed a combination of sled dogs, Manchurian ponies, and even a few motorized tractors. They had those that they brought on the ships? That's crazy. I don't know what those are. Don't like 1911. This. The machines quickly broke down, however, and his ponies grew weak in the cold and had to be shot. Oh, total bummer. Yeah. After sending the dogs back to camp, he and his team were forced to spend much of their journey man-hauling their heavy heavy supply sledges on foot. So it's going rough for him. Had to shoot. Had to shoot the ponies, kill the machines, and uh, the dogs were tired. Munston, meanwhile, relied solely on skis and sled dogs to cross the tundra. The dogs helped his men save their strength, and the explorers later killed the weakest of the animals to supplement their food supply. Being an explorer is kind of ruthless. These guys have the smallest penises in the world. Like, it's just so pathetic. You don't like it. Everything they're going through to say, I stepped on a piece of ground first. Yeah. That's what I was That's what I was saying. It's weird. But, it's I pathetic. mean, skis on the dog does seem smarter. So so far, the, the Norwegian's a good, pretty good bad guy. Skis on the guy. Skis weren't on the dog. Well, if the skis were on the dog, that'd be that'd fun be too. Cool. But, yeah, good the pictures. dog's pulling you on skis. Yeah. That sounds fun. Thanks to the speed of his dog team's Amundsen's party managed to race toward the pole at a pace of over 20 miles per day. The Norwegians took an untested route that forced them to navigate a frozen maze of crevices, mountains, and glaciers. But by early December, they had penetrated farther into the heart of Antarctica than anyone in history. Amundsen would later write that he had the same feeling that I can remember as a little boy on the night before Christmas Eve an intense expectation of what was going to happen. I would hope you had a more for this than the Christmas stuff. It's cold. Yeah. Well, that plays into Christmas. It's cold. Well, yeah, you're in a house. Yeah. Well, he not Norway. Not how he grew up. Don't. Yeah. Tent life. Finally, on December 14th, 1911. Isn't that Nana's birthday? No, that's Grandma's. Whatever. December 11th, he and his companions arrived at the South Pole. The men planted the Norwegian flag, smoked celebratory cigars, and posed for snapshots. But they only remained for a few days before beginning the arduous trek back to their base. It's so pathetic, dude. So he won? I mean, there's a picture of the flag of Norway planted in some ice. How do you know that's the fucking South Pole? There's no... I don't. I personally don't. I don't either. How did he know? Coordinates? Not sure. I mean, how was that exciting for him? It looks like every other place they've been. It's miserable. It's kind of pathetic. As a bad guy, I I get that this... I'm happy it served his ego, which is huge, I guess. Over a month later, on January 17th, 1912, Scott and his weary British team finally reached the pole. To their dismay, they spotted the remnants of Asmundan's camp just as they were approaching. Great God, Scott wrote in his diary. This is an awful place and terrible enough for us to have labored to it without the reward of priority. It would have been so much cooler if he was like, it wasn't about being first. We're just very happy that we arrived. But that's what all this is. I know. But if he, like, had a realization, like, you know, it was about the journey, not the destination, but, like, the sucks. No, because they ate their dogs and shit. Like, these people suck. Amundsen ate his dogs. These people We don't suck. know if these guys did. They ate a dog. They definitely I'm ate telling their you. dogs, yeah. A lot of people think that second photo is a victory photo from Scott, but it's them posing very sadly in front of the Norwegian flag that was there first. Well, <laughs> just, why just, would... like, disappointing. They took a picture near it. Jeez. At least be petty. Like, just take the flag out. Who would know? Who cares? I mean, you just take the flag out, you bury it at sea when you're out into sea, and then you just say, there was no flag when we were there. Fucking Amundsen's a liar. Yeah. You don't even have to take the flag out. They no one's going back to check. <laughs> well, they say, went back. Say Amundsen's picture is a lie. Yeah, Amundsen's picture, he took that in the Either middle of the way. world. Scott had been beaten to the pole, but his troubles were only beginning, Jake. Yeah. 
The British team had reached their destination late in the Antarctic summer, and temperatures were dropping rapidly. They began the slow slog north, but exhaustion, frostbite, and malnourishment had soon spread through their ranks. On February 17th, more than 20 days after Munson Group had returned to their base camp, a man named Edgar Evans became the first of the British party to die. The severely frostbitten Lawrence Oates followed a month later after sacrificing himself in a blizzard to avoid slowing down the team. I am, I am just going outside and maybe some time, he said, before leaving the group's tent and vanishing. Famous last words. Yeah, see you guys. Scott, his friend Dr. Edward Wilson, and another man, Henry Bowers, gamely continued the journey for another few days, but temperatures continued to plunge, and they were later caught in a blizzard only 11 miles away from one of their supply depots. All three would perish in their tent just days later. We shall stick it out to the end, but we are getting weaker. Of course, and the end cannot be far, Scott wrote in his last diary entry. It seems a pity, but I do not think I can write more. By the time the bodies of Scott Wilson and Bowers were found later that November, Ronald Amundsen had already returned home in triumph and embarked on a lecture tour. Despite having won the race without losing a single man, he was in many ways overshadowed by Scott, whose doomed march had made him a hero in his native Britain. Jesus, I hate everything about this. Yeah. Undeterred, Amundsen continued his wandering and eventually explored the Arctic both at sea and in a dirigible. Yeah, you know. And in a dirigible, which he Explored used- the Arctic both at sea and in a dirigible. <laughs> Which used to reach the North Pole in 1926. It's like a kind of boat. Dirigible. It's a blimp. Oh. I mean, that's so much different so than much not cooler. knowing the word. To know he was in a Zeppelin in the sky. That's cool. I'm glad we looked it up. Two years later, he died in a plane crash while searching for a missing explorer over Norway's Salvbard Archipelago. Explorers continued to venture to Antarctica in the years after Asmundsen's and Scott's legendary race, but it was not until 1956 that an expedition once again stood on the South Pole. I'm glad they waited it out till they could actually get there without dying. The world's southernmost point has been continuously inhabited ever since, and its two earliest pioneers are now honored in the name of its permanent research facility. The Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. I hate everything. Yeah. Why are we celebrating these guys? Because white men for, throughout history have just been bad. It's the realization. What is We've that? We've just fucked up the whole thing. There's been some good ones, but these There's guys are There's a couple aren't. good ones. The majority suck. I don't know about majority, but these two suck. I think majority. I got to be honest. I think Amundsen is the bad guy. I mean, is the good guy. Scott is the bad guy. They all, they will suck. No, Scott went there for science and then convinced his team that they need to go to the South Pole. Killed and they all people. died. Yeah. It's like, we, we, that wasn't even the reason we came here. Yeah. The Norwegian was like, hey, I want to do this. Got his own crew. Did it out. No it's one died. two dickheads killing, killing themselves for nothing. Yeah. You know, you know who these guys are? They're Nick Walenda of their time. <laughs> mm. No one hey, needs, hey. no one needs to do what you're doing. Hey. The fact that they're honored at the South Pole is crazy. They were murderers. Yeah, and I've actually, I'm kind of coming around on Rold, who I hated, because at least he did it, he went back, and he tried to make money on it. He was safe about it, too. Nobody died. No humans died. Excuse me. And then he went back on his tour, and he, you know, tried to profit on it. I get that. Like, for that time period, if you go to the South Pole, and then you go on a book tour or whatever, cool, dude. Like, I kind of get that. I, I... Whoa. I like a Mudson a little bit. I think he's a knowing bad guy. Sure. And how does Scott not know about skis? Seems like they were the biggest thing there. He brought machines? What are you talking about? It's 1911, dude. Machines worked well. For an hour. And then they were like, <laughs> oh, too cold for this metal gear. Well, let's try him. Ah. Ah, shit. No dice. Brought ponies. Sounds mm. like they killed those immediately. Almost instantly. 
I can't, dude. I, I'm honestly shocked that these guys are like honored. Yeah, they're murderers. They literally just killed people just to just to go to a patch Scott of ice. Killed people. Amundsen did nothing wrong. He killed himself because he lost someone. And he had to try and find them, and they died in the plane. Not from that trip, though. Later on, I'm sure Amundsen killed people. Amundsen killed people. <laughs> I, I, I never doubt in my mind. People if died I'm, because of his decisions. If I'm Amundsen, I am pissed. That Scott's name is on the facility. So is he. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, yes. Oh, yeah. So, wait. I beat him there, and I didn't die on the expedition, and he gets honored? I am pissed about that. <sighs> Should be. What was Amundsen's first name? Rold? Rold. Rold. I'm going to Google image him. Isn't it crazy that the next time they could successfully get to Antarctic was like 45 years later. Like, they were so far away from it being like a... Luke, I'm going to talk you off of that because no one fucking wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't care. They're like, oh, everyone dies because it's All not All the worth loser it. explorers that have this itch to be the first person to step on somewhere, it's already been stepped on, and everyone else doesn't want to be there. Like, let's go when it's but safe. they went in the 50s, so, like, why is it... Because it was changed? safe. They had yeah, the technology. They That's what I'm saying. And That's how long it took for it to become safe. It's been inhabited years. every... Like, people could have done it after that, and then they could have done the 50-50 coin flip of death or not. Okay, I have the images of both gentlemen. Okay. And it paints Robert Falcon Scott in the way that I had him pictured. Kind of like a weasel, like, trying to make daddy proud nonstop. Sure. So here's him. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, it matches up to that personality trait. Now, I think you're really going to like him, Munston. I've already been in on the roll train. I mean, he I tried is to left, and he brought me villain. back. Yes. Super villain, dude. He belongs in a blimp. Like, of course this guy dies in a blimp. Yeah, he had to. I mean, he's born into that. Like, look at that. Just His grandchildren just... died in a blimp. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen someone. Yeah. Oh, he had that mustache back in the day, too? Yeah. He I mean, Robert Robert better. Scott, his whole life was trying to make Daddy proud. That's what it was really about for him. He ended up killing a bunch of ponies. His dad didn't even care. It's pathetic. Yeah. It's a sad story. For humankind. Take Scott's name off the building. Yeah, should we start that? I think I'm going to start a petition. Dude, just... Killed others and himself for no reason. Wasn't even supposed to do it. And, oh my God, people are so stupid. Rold's quote earlier was that science can fucking wait. And now he has a science lab named after him. People are so dumb. They both shouldn't be on the bill. Scott's a murderer and Rold hates science. Wow. Here's your building. Yeah. Let's honor these people. Who's the actor so that plays dumb. plays the um, in Yes Man with Jim Carrey? Wow. You know what I'm talking about? Kind of, yeah. There's that British actor that plays the, like, synergy, say yes. That's the guy. That's your guy. That would play. Um, I've still got that picture of young Donald Sutherland stuck in my head, so that's all <laughs> I can think of. Um, Is there another Sutherland on the way? Does Donald have acting kids? I don't know. Or Kiefer? But, uh, Excuse this, me. This dude was, this actor was born to play role to Oh, the yeah, Terrence. It's Terrence. too Sutherland. late. Yeah. Did he die? He's just really old now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, he was born to play role Yeah. And he's like a dick in some movies, too. I think it's funny that in the beginning you were like, okay, so you're setting this up for a big underdog comeback story, and it's... No. Amundsen just destroys him and Rolled he dies. smoked him. <laughs> yeah. Because he didn't care about science. So you have, yeah, I'm with you. Take their names off the building. Thanks for How tuning old's in. How Kiefer? He's 53. I guess he could still do it. He's an action star. <laughs> he might have kids. Yeah, but I don't think his kids are old. He's got a daughter. I think Kiefer could still play the guy in the movie. Okay. Sarah Sutherland. She's 32. She can be involved. Yeah. I have no problem with her being in it. Okay, great. She was in Veep. Yeah, I feel like I recognize her. Cool. All right, thank you guys very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye.